Hello friends. In the previous videos, we talked about the force. And in this video, we will talk about the moment of the force. So moment is also another very frequently used term in structural analysis. So we need to know what the moment is and how we can calculate the moment. So let us assume that we got an object on the ground. So this is our object, okay? The repeated object that I've been drawing since past videos. <laughs> okay, so this is the best example that can be given. So when you apply a load on this box, so let's say you load apply the load of 10 kilo Newton on this from left to right. In this case, the box will move in the forward direction. So this kind of motion is known as the translational motion. Translational motion. So there is one another kind of motion that the force does on a body. So you can see that this motion, this translational motion is actually created by this force. Okay. So just like this motion, uh, so force can create another kind of motion as well. So now let us assume that, uh, okay, so uh, we got a small rod and uh, so this is our ground and this rod has been fixed to the ground, uh, not completely fixed, but partially fixed. So how? With the help of a hinge. So this is, let's say hinge uh, on the ground. So the hinge is fixed on the ground and this rod has been fixed on this hinge. So this hinge so this is hinge of this support so uh, due to the presence of this hinge uh, the this rod can rotate like this so it cannot move forward or backward it can just rotate okay due to the presence of this hinge so the hinges uh, if you don't know what the hinges are so they are you can find the hinges in your doors so they help to rotate the objects so here the rod so this is our rod right so it will have a hole in this and the hinge also will have a hole in it like this okay and if we put a screw from here to here so if we put a screw like this now this rod can rotate about this hinge so when you apply the load from this direction let's say you apply the same load 10 kN now as this hinge is fixed on the ground okay the base of the hinge is fixed on the ground it cannot move but it will rotate like this so this kind of motion is known as the rotational motion rotational motion and this ability of the force to rotate the body is known as moment of force so moment of force is equal to the ability of force to rotate the body so this movement of force or the, you say the ability of the force to rotate the body or ability of the force to create the rotational effect in the body this is also known as the torque t-o-r-q-u-v torque you must have heard about this term so this is the definition of the moment of the force the rotational effect on the body is known as the moment of the force now let us see how we can calculate the moment so i'll just delete uh, these things okay now let's say that uh, let's say that our load is being applied here so i'll just uh, rewrite uh, this over here okay so we got the hinge on the ground and we got the rod like this so let's say that the load being applied is is let's say f and uh, the distance from uh, this point that is the point where the load is being applied to this point so that is the point where the screw is actually placed so the, i just told you about this screw so let's say that uh, this distance is actually the distance d so now the moment due to the force f let's say that is m is equal to that force times the distance d so here the distance d is known as the moment arm moment arm if this is your force f is being applied and if you draw a line in the direction of the force 
so this line is known as line of action line of action of force okay and you can see that and you can see that so if this is your hinge if this is your hinge uh, the rod will rotate about this point this point okay the axis that will pass through this point so this axis this is known as the axis of rotation axis of rotation so the axis of rotation will pass through the point where the rotation will actually happen so this movement arm is nothing but the perpendicular distance perpendicular distance between between line of between line of action of force line of action of force and the axis of uh, it is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of force and the axis of rotation so here the line of action of force is this and the axis of rotation is this one this one so this perpendicular distance from these two lines is known as the moment arm so the value of the magnitude of the moment is force times the moment arm so here you can see that the unit of the force is uh, newton let's say the si unit and the si unit of the distance or that is the length is meter so the unit of the moment is unit of the moment is newton meter now let us talk about the direction of this moment you can see that the equation for the moment is equal to force times the moment arm r or you can say the distance d so here the force is a vector quantity and this distance is also a vector quantity so due to this reason movement is also a vector quantity which means that it has got both magnitude as well as the direction so this equation will give you the magnitude of the force and to get the direction of the moment you need to use the thumb rule so right hand thumb rule okay right hand let's say right hand right hand thumb rule so how you do that let us say that so this is the point about which the rotation takes place and this is the direction of the force f so this distance is r so this is the direction of r and this is the direction of the force so if you place your palm like this so if let's say that this is your hand so a very ugly hand right so if let's say that this is your hand and if you place palm in the direction of r and if you curl your fingers so if you curl your fingers in the direction of the force that is in the upward direction in that case where your thumb will point so the direction of the thumb the direction of the thumb of the thumb gives the direction of the movement it gives the direction of the movement so for the direction pointing towards you we will denote by the cross because we cannot show how it actually looks like in this 2d view so towards you towards you right and for dot we will use away from you away from you it means that the direction of the movement is towards you in this case in another case let's say that this is your point so this is the direction of r the movement arm or the d and the force is being applied in the downward direction so now if you place your palm here palm in this direction and if you curl your fingers in the downward direction in the downward direction the thumb will now point in the uh, direction away from you that will be the dot so in this case the movement will be in the cross direction the movement will be in the dot direction that is the movement will be away from you so basically what happens is that the movement is perpendicular to the plane on which the r and f exist so uh, in in this case let's say that uh, the r and f exist in so this is our x direction and this is our uh, let's say y direction so r and f both exist in the uh, xy plane so in that case the movement will be in the z direction 
so the moment will be perpendicular to the plane on which the force and the distance exist okay when the force is applied on a body uh, for the purpose of rotation let's say that so this is our body and this is the hinge and you apply the force and you can see that in this body the rotation generated is the clockwise rotation clockwise rotation and when the force is in the same body if you apply the force from the opposite direction from here the rotation generated will be the anti clockwise direction anti clockwise direction and you can say the rotation is anti clockwise rotation so which rotation to consider the positive rotation and which rotation to consider the negative rotation it's all up to you so it is known as the convention sign convention okay sign convention you can take this movement as positive and this movement as negative or you can take this movement as negative and this movement as positive you can do anything however so whatever convention you have chosen to take you should use the same convention throughout that problem so you cannot have you know one convention at certain point and another convention at certain another point so you need to have the same convention throughout that problem so we talked about the equilibrium of a body so we talked that summation of if the summation of forces is equal to zero in that case the body is in equilibrium so now we have learned about the moment so now we say that if the summation of moment is also zero in that case only the body will be in equilibrium so not only the summation of the forces but also the summation of the moment also needs to be zero so we had the forces in three directions so that is a in the x direction that is fx in the y direction fy and in the z direction fz similarly we do have the moment in the x direction we do have the moment in the y direction we do have the moment in the z direction the summation of all the forces summation fx must be equal to 0 the summation fy must be equal to 0 summation fz must be equal to 0 for the body to be in equilibrium also movement in the x direction must be equal to 0 summation okay summation of movements in the x direction must be 0 summation of movements in the y direction must be 0 and the summation of movements in the z direction must be 0 now let's talk about how we can assess or you can say the calculate the moment so we have already seen the equation for calculating the moment and all you need to see is the what is the direction so if two movements are in the same direction you add them if the movements are in opposite direction you subtract them for example let us say that we got a point B over here or let's say it's a point A not B and we got a force acting from here acting at this position force F now you have to find the moment due to this force F so moment due to the force F at point A is equal to we know that it's the it is equal to force F times the perpendicular distance but here you can see that you do not see the perpendicular distance so what do you have to do you have to extend the line of action of the force and you have to drop a perpendicular from this point now you can see that this distance d is the perpendicular distance similarly if the force is in this direction let's say force f1 in this case the perpendicular distance will be d1 similarly if the force is in, in this direction you extend the line of action of force you drop the perpendicular this is f2 and this is d2 here the force f will produce anti-clockwise movement so let's say that this anti-clockwise movement is the positive movement here you can see that the force f1 will produce the clockwise movement because it will rotate this point like this right so let's say m8 due to force this is force due to f so this is due to force f2 this is not sorry f1 okay 
एफ वन टाइम्स डी वन सो दिस इज माइनस सिमिलरली फोर्स एफ टू इफ यू सी ओवर हियर इट विल प्रोड्यूस एंटी क्लॉक वाइज मूवमेंट सो एम ए ड्यू टू फोर्स एफ टू इज इक्वल टू माइनस एफ टू इन टू डी टू सो दिस इज पॉजिटिव बिकॉज इट इज एंटी क्लॉक वाइज सो इफ यू टेक एंटी क्लॉक वाइज एज द नेगेटिव सो दिस वन विल बी माइनस दिस वन विल बी प्लस एंड दिस वन विल बी माइनस अल्टीमेटली यू विल एड दिस टू एंड सब्ट्रैक्ट विथ दिस वन टू गेट द समेशन ऑफ मूवमेंट वैल्यू एट पॉइंट ए राइट सो दिस इज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ मूवमेंट इन अ बॉडी